my fellow friend, Love and Southern Thinkers. This is LL3 News Podcast. My name is Craig Trains, meeting from the beautiful Swampy Manga, South Florida. And today's date is Monday, May 13th, 2019. So let us begin. Oh, sorry, to, sorry about that, folks. Thanks for tuning in once again. I know it's the second podcast I'm doing today. And I am at Downtown or Saloon, located at 10 North. South River New Drive East. I know they goofed up here, which is in the heart of the New River downtown Fort Lauderdale area. So, um, pretty cool, pretty cool place. The very supportive, like I say. Yeah, ten South New River Drive East, Fort Lauderdale. For more information, nine five four four six three nine eight hundred, or just hit the down. The historic downtowner.com. The search engine at Downtown and Saloon. Self explanatory. So, um, yeah, so what occurred is a few things. I'm going to be mainly talking about Florida gun rights. And uh, this uh, Florida carrier looks like there's another lawsuit they filed against the Florida Department of Law Enforcement. And a couple things in the city of Palm Beach. So this one came from the gunwriter.com and by Lee Williams. This came out today. It says here, breaking Florida Carry Sue's FDLE for violating background check laws. It's, it's, it has massive ramifications for the way the Florida Department of Law Enforcement conduct background checks. I said it before, but it bears repeating. Florida Carry is an incredible organization that does more for the rights of Florida gun owners than any other organization. This lawsuit is just the latest example. So show them some support at FloridaCarry.org. I am a member of that organization as well, folks. So do it. They're really, they're really good. They're, getting, they're starting to create more traction. So it's here. It says here. Florida Carry sues FDLE for violation of background check laws. A class action lawsuit for ongoing violations of Florida's firearms background check and preemption laws was filed today on behalf of all Floridians whose rights to acquire firearms have been illegally interfered with the Department, Florida Department of Law Enforcement. Florida Law 790.065, subsection 2, requires that FDLE complete background checks for firearm purchases within. 24 working hours. In March 2018, FDLE began illegally putting background checks into indefinite decision pending status. Various plaintiffs have been waiting for much as a year, in some cases, even after providing FDLE with certified proof that they are not prohibited from purchasing firearms. Interesting. The law is crystal clear on how FDLE is required to conduct background checks and issue either approval conditional or non-approval status on background checks. And a definite decision pending is not a legal status under Florida statute. FDLE has knowingly and willfully changed its policies, rules, and regulations to illegally deprive many law-abiding Floridians to keep their right to bear without proper evidence of a disqualifying background or the due process required for the denial of a fundamental right. I'm going to stop there for a moment. We have a friend of mine that was never convicted of any violent crimes. And her right to purchase has been denied. So this is a very interesting case. we got to see how deep this rabbit hole goes, right? Bureaucrats in Florida have no authority to regulate the right to keep and bear arms. But only the legislature, legislature may enact Florida farm weapons, laws, or procedures. Under FDLE Commissioner Surrogan's leadership, Florida's top law enforcement agents became lawbreaker by illegally taking it upon themselves to violate the rights of Florida citizens. Florida law under provides that 790.065.10, a licensed importer, licensed manufacturer, or a licensed dealer is not required to comply with the requirements of this section in the event of B, failure of the Department of Law Enforcement 
to comply with the requirements of subsections 2 and 3. FDLE is not complying. The FDLE commissioner must be beyond reproach in ensuring that the Department of Law Enforcement operate in adherence to Florida law. We call on Governor DeSantis to direct FDLE to immediately comply with Florida farm laws and exercise his unquestionable authority to take appropriate action in light of the Commissioner Reagan's malfeasance in office. Woo, interesting there. I think this is pretty damn good, I would say, with all due respect. And Lee Williams, I can thank you for putting this out. And one thing I gotta say, you go by the book, if not, you get the hell out. Plain and simple. I recommend everyone out there to call and contact Governor DeSantis on this motive. I said, hey, if this clown doesn't want to proceed, then fire his ass. Plain and simple. He has that power. He's the governor. If not, it could be on Governor DeSantis' lap. So one thing I like to say is about time, because how many others have been deprived on this? There's a whole lot. So that's one of the areas I like to say thank you to Florida Carry on making this a reality. So folks, go to floridacarry.org. Donate money to this, this cause. Remember, I did one too about the lawsuit against the city of Miami Beach. So to action speaks louder than words. You don't complain. That's what Florida Carry is doing. They're, let, they're letting their exhibition speak for itself. So, everyone out there should take the initiative on contacting not just Governor DeSantis, even to your elected servants within the great state of Florida. Tell them like it is. Because one thing you can say, one person, violate one person's right, deprives us all. No ends, ifs, or buts. So, next one here. I'm going to be doing going to be a couple of them. It's from the Palm Beach Daily News. And it came out yesterday. And this is funny. It says here, Palm Beach asked lawmakers to review open carry gun law. But that's where, you know, where all the, where Trump's, uh, um, um, the Mar was that, La Margo's at, the Breakers Hotel. It's all where all the great, rich people live. The Winthorps, the Penelope's, the Kippies, I don't know. I'm not making judgment to all those folks, but it looks like the individuals in the, representing the Palm Beach, Florida, don't really have a clue as lawmakers to review open carry gun law. So this is what has to say right here. This is by William Kelly. Came out yesterday morning on Mother's Day. It says there has been weeks since group a group of gun rights activists raised eyebrows by carrying guns with them on the Royal Park Bridge. That open and legal display of farms on March 23rd was unsettling for town officials and residents. <gasps> Some of them asked why people, why police couldn't prevent it. Oh my God! The air raid sirens, right? Of anxiety. Ah! All right, I just gotta be a little sarcastic here. Michael Taylor, a Port St. Lucie man and a member of the group known as Florida Carry, has followed up with two visits into town. He addressed the town council and as its as at its April twenty third meeting, telling officials that his group visits communities to educate people about gun rights and how they are trying to pass unconstitutional laws that only hurt law abiding citizens, not criminals. And remember, Article 1, Section 10 of the Florida Constitution states, prohibited laws. <laughs> well, I didn't know about that. I'm an attorney. Well, we'll get to proceed here. Ted was back on the island two days later with a fishing pole and a gun in tow. Town manager Kirk Bowen has said Florida Carry exploits a loophole in state gun laws that allow people to openly carry their fishing, hunting, or camping. <laughs> How glam buoyant of him. On April, on April 25th, Taylor 39 walked about six miles in town, was stopped at the Royal Park Bridge in Midtown, Midtown Beach, 
P Palm Beach police trailed him. Stalking, how astute. Makes you real manly. Your tax dollars at work, Palm Beach, Florida. The visits continued to prompt questions in town. Bowen was asked about gun carrying activists at a civic gathering at the Breakers on Wednesday. Ooh, the Breakers. They, they're, pur they're purposely trying to be provocative, Bowen said. They're trying to entice law firms to take action so they can sue them. <laughs> Look at who the hell is this guy? Oh, my goodness. Mayor Gale Gale Con Coniglo at the council's request has written state, legis state legislators asking that the loophole be closed in urban areas. Oh, my God. You want to make it like New York City. Ooh, how safe, right? Coniglo's May 6th letter was addressed to the Florida Senate, President of the Senate, Bill Galvano, Republican from Brennanton. It was copied to Senate Bobby Powell, the Democrat West Palm Beach, and State Representative Michael A. Caruso, Democrat from Delray Beach, whose districts encompass Palm Beach, and to the State Senator Lori Berman, Democrat from Boynton Beach, and State Representative David Silvers, Democrat from Lake Clark Shores. How special is that? The letter says Palm Beach is requesting a review of the section of state law that allows open carry during fishing, hunting, and camping. We respect the intent of the law to provide uniform firearm regulations and believe that the section of the statute is appropriate for rural areas or inappropriate in densely populated urban communities, she wrote. I urge the Senate to amend the statute to incorporate language that prohibits open carry in urban areas and to reduce the threat to safety, health, and welfare of its residents. Well, I have a question for you. Coniglio, Mayor Gail Coniglio, could you prove to me the Palm Beach police are obligated to protect every individual in your community you represent? The city you supposedly reside? Prove it, if you dare. I'll give you the answer. Technically, no. Florida Statute 768.28, sovereign immunity tort liability. But public res public employees aren't liable for certain actions. And Wong versus the city of Miami, 1970, Florida State Supreme Court said it itself. The police aren't obligated on protecting an individual. So, that's your answer to the question. It will urge the threat to safety, health, and welfare of its residents. The Florida legislature just wrapped up its 2019 legislation session and isn't scheduled to meet again until early next year. Until the state changes the law, we're going to continue to keep this community safe. Boland said Wednesday, let's keep it safe. Oh, yeah. We'll have the police protect us all the time, which we all know is just another wet dream. <laughs> I, I was like, I, I was like hanging out. I was in Hiroshima and I was reading this. I just like to thank the foot folks for the carry posting on Facebook. I just bust out laughing. Underdog, save me! I have the sweet pie pyramid syndrome. Meek and unmeritable, to be exact. You don't have to review anything. You're not going to tell me how should I live. I have those basic rights under Article 1, Section 2 of the Florida Constitution. Kirk Bolin and Mayor Cogniglio. That's right. My natural born rights, certain natural born rights are inalienable. You gotta try to tell me I can't do something? Ha <laughs> ha! Until you look, until you learn how to Wipe your own rear ends. I don't know what to do. You better just think what you think before you speak. Well, the truth of the matter is, folks, they're just power hungry people. Going to use a sweet talk to say we'll protect you. Well, like I said, just look at that law and the case I addressed before I mentioned. It's self explanatory. You're in the first line of defense. I'm not saying go around being Rambo or Macho or anything like that. That's pretty damn absurd. 
but this is how they want to do things. I say, you know what? Give them the big middle finger, especially to all those rich folks out there that live in Palm Beach. I'm trying to tell you you shouldn't be doing this. Well, the hell with them. Plain and simple. It's a great little editorial on this from Palm Beach Daily News. How flamboyant is it, right? This here, editorial mayor seeks clarity on gun, gun carry laws. <laughs> and it came out it came out 802 on Mother's Day. This seems to contrary to common sense. And who wrote this? Oh, the editorial, so I'll continue on here. It seems the contrary to common sense. Why is it perfectly legal for citizens to carry guns as long as they are carrying a fishing pole? That's what the state for the statute 790.25 says, section 3, subsection H, states it's legally for people to carry weapons when they are fishing, camping, or lawful hunting, or going, or to returning from a fishing, camping, or lawful hunting expedition. Expedition. The law makes no mention of where such fishing, camping, or hunting should take place. And that's the concern for town officials. <laughs> fear, fear. Give me an F, F, A, A, E. F, E, A, R. Fear, fear, fear. Like, you see what's going on? They will put the happy dogs, folks, wig out. Like, too many, watch too many Hollywood movies, I would say. Members of Florida Carrier Second Amendment Rights Group have come to town three times this year. Guns in tow twice. The visits alarmed many residents prompted the town council after the first time to ask Mayor Gail, Gail Congliglio to write legislation in an effort to close the lop, lop, lopy loophole. Loopy loophole, okay? Last week, Mayor Congliglio took a wise and measured approach in a letter to Bill Gavano, the president of the Florida Senate. I'll have to read this one more time. It's very entertaining. We respect the intent of the law to provide uniform firearms regulations and believe that this section of the statute is appropriate for rural areas but inappropriate in densely populated urban communities, she wrote. I urge the Senate to come amend the statute to incorporate language that prohibits open carry in urban areas to reduce the threat to safety, health, and welfare of its residents. So if you got governments go rogue with guns, it's a, is it an exceptional Mayor Congliglio? Congliglio? Please. How pretentious of you. And I say that in good faith. A cautious Mayor Congliglio didn't resort to hyperbole or dispute the Second Amendment. Though determining what encompasses an urban area would like would take some discussion. The mayor's common sense argument is one that should have been implemented when the law was written. Ooh. How astounding! With the influence of the National Rifle Association and the solid Republican Senate, one has to wonder whether the letter will do any good. Oddly, legislators, legislators appear more interested in stopping communities from banning plastic straws and tackling a serious public threat. The state Senate and the House passed a bill earlier this month that prohibited local government from enforcing any ordinance banning plastic straws until July 2024. The incident with Florida Carey shook many residents, prompting the police to issue a release explaining how officers handled the situation. The police took a hands-off approach to members who, who brought fishing poles and guns with them to Royal Park Bridge on March 23rd. Because half a dozen members brought fishing poles with them and insisted they were actually fishing. Yeah, you just watch their damn videos for goodness sakes. You could, on YouTube, they're actually fishing. Okay, come on. Even though poles were mostly unattended and there weren't any tackle boxes, bait, or freshly caught fish, police were powerless. About a month later, one of the fishermen, Michael Taylor, returned to town, this time speaking at a town council meeting about gun rights. Today, two days later, a 39-year-old Port St. Lucie man walked from Midtown Beach to the Middle Bridge with his Glock and an M M and P 1522. Police trained Mr. Taylor, who said he was once nearly robbed while fishing in Fort Pierce until he left town. Mayor Congliglio presented a res a reposeful common sense argument 
one that will resonate with legislators, unfortunately, she may end up shooting blanks. You damn right. Like I said before, you believe firearm free zones can have open carry with the fishing poles gonna be a crime? I got a question for the Palm Beach mayor. How is your budget? Are you trying to tax the crap out of the residents over there? Are you trying to find ways of arresting people and citing them to collect more revenue? How arrogant is that? Remember, folks, government's a parasite of society. It's in, in Palm Beach, council, the mayor, is just a fine example. And all those folks out there that have this firearm phobia, I want, you know, do yourself a favor, deport your rear ends back out of my state. Because it's con you're contaminating it. Farms that have changed, society has. I've lived down here for 42 years. I can make that statement. You're talking about a man who's from born in Brooklyn, New York. So, this is why I'm laughing. I may get ticked off. I'm laughing about this because it's meek and unmeritable. So you, all you folks in Palm Beach, and even go to the police chief, ask him, can you prove to us that the police are obligated on protecting an individual? Or protect me and my family? You'd be surprised. If they answer no, at least you're honest. If they give you a runaround, they don't want you to know the truth. Do your own homework before jumping on some bandwagon. And this editorial editor, you're the one who's shooting blanks too. Deep down inside, you know I'm right. All right. And that is it. Hey, it's short and sweet. I thank everyone for listening. Plus, feel free to download the show on social media networks. If you have any questions, comments, or you're saying something that's interesting you want to check out, whatever you do, please send your correspondence to Decorum. Plus, I'll be leaving my footnotes, social media sites, the contact me and email addresses on my speaker page. All right? Once again, thank you for your time. Plus, always remember that the maniac resistance helps the soul and can liberate humanity. Until next time, take care of yourselves. Keep on spreading the love. And may your guardian spirits be with you.